What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's uh, been a while actually. <laughs> I think it's been about six or seven months since I made a video, but we're back and uh, I apologize for the lack of content lately, but you know, I've just been kind of busy with life and whatnot. But here we are, we're back. This is my 2016 Honda Accord Coupe V6 six-speed manual that you guys have seen in several videos before. Just wanted to go ahead and hit you guys with another update video because uh, I've done a couple of things to the car since the last time you've seen it and uh, you guys know the drill by this point. So here she is, still looking pretty good. The first thing I want to mention is, of course, I got some new tires. So I uh, went with the same set that I've had for, I believe this is my third set now. I went with the Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06 Plus tires. These are an ultra high performance all season tire. I've been running these for, shoot, probably four or five years now. Like I said, this is my third set and I absolutely love them. So decided to get another set. Um, they have about 5,000 miles on them now. They're wearing pretty nicely, of course. I typically get about 35,000 miles out of these tires, and that's totally fine with me because they grip really well, and I just uh, am very happy with the performance, especially for you know a daily driver kind of car. Um, I don't like the inflexibility of summer tires, so I believe these are the next best thing. I would highly recommend these tires. Like I mentioned, it's my third set. Absolutely love them. I'd say between these and the uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. Those are two of the best, you know, tires uh, out there. Although the, I think the Pilot Sport 4S's are summers. But anyways, that's that's that. Got some new tires on there. Of course, the, the shop I took it to, which is kind of like a more specialty shop because, you know, my car is lowered and has modified suspension and whatnot. Um, they did an alignment for me, of course, and while they were doing that, they actually noticed that one of my tie rods was loose. I uh, just had a, a minor amount of play, so I decided to go ahead and just take care of it. I believe it was the inner tie rod that they replaced, but yeah, uh, yeah. So I believe it was the inner tie rod on the passenger side. Not sure if you guys, you guys probably can't see that too well, but uh, just take my word for it. We had the tie rod replaced, so got that good to go. Everything else looked good suspension wise. Uh, the car is of course still on the Teen Flex Z coilovers uh, with the SPC rear camber kit. Have about 37,000 miles on them now. It's doing very well. So I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Of course this is again my second set of those suspension components I used to have uh, my last 9th gen Accord on the exact same setup. So replicated that for this car and I'm uh, still just as happy as as I was with it before. I've been running this setup for about six years now between the two cars, so there you go. And really, <laughs> that's really it for the exterior stuff. Uh, just like I said, new tires and alignment and a tie rod, and uh, the car is still on the road doing just fine. Um, <clears throat> of course, I put I had put new brakes on this car a uh, little after I hit 100,000 miles. I think it was around 102, and we still got, you know, uh, plenty of meat left. I, I really like these um, brakes that I put on here, the uh, Centric Posi Quiet brake pads with the uh, Centric Premium Smooth Rotors. So, still got plenty of life out of those. And you know what's interesting is my last 9th gen, my 2017 V6 automatic car, I put those same brakes on there. I sold it to my friend Zachary and he is still driving it. I believe those brakes have over 80,000 miles on them now and they still have plenty of pad left. So really happy with those for again, a daily driver road trip kind of car. So there you have it. And that's really all I have to report on the outside of the car. I guess we can just take a little walk around just so you guys can uh, see her again. Um, I just washed it a couple of days ago. The weather has been really unsettled and crappy for about the past six months here in uh, Northern California. So it's been raining quite a bit. So I haven't really had a chance to keep the car as clean as I'd like, but I just washed it a couple days ago, and although it is a little dusty, you guys can't really tell because it is the golden hour, so kind of happy about that. But as far as aesthetically, there's really no other changes. I'm not really sure if this was in the last video, but I did uh, get a different sticker. I believe I did mention that of the uh, Manual Gearbox Preservation Society, which I'm uh, a big fan of, of course. I'd like to reel my own gears, so... I believe I mentioned that before, and other than that, again, nothing has gone on with the car. I'm just, uh, like I mentioned, I think in the last video, I'm really happy with uh, the way it looks, and I don't really intend to make any other changes to the car. Now, I was thinking about doing a chrome delete, and I think I've mentioned this in videos before, but uh, I still may end up doing that at some point, but the cost to have a shop do that was kind of uh, the thing that's always stopped me. So. Other than that, like I mentioned, car still looks exactly the same. Um, 
I think I mentioned this before too, but I did get the front windshield tinted to 70%. I mentioned that, I think, when I had the front end repainted. And uh, speaking of that, I'd like to just go ahead and give a quick update on the paint. You know, as you guys, if you guys watched the last video, you'll know that I had pretty much the front end, the entire front end of this car repainted because it had been in an accident previously. Uh, you know, like a year after it was it was bought and uh, it wasn't repaired super well. So I had the hood, the bumper, and the right side fender repainted, and I also had Expel Ultimate PPF put on the front, and it is holding up pretty well. I am pretty happy with it. I haven't really noticed any other any paint defects so far. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I only was able to get the like front edge, the front clip of the car basically done in the PPF. I don't know if you, yeah, you guys can kind of tell. That's that's kind of where it stops. And so, unfortunately, you know, it only protects it up until that point. So I did get a rock chip, you know, three inches past the PPF, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I have pretty aggressive wheels that kick a whole bunch of dirt and shit up into the car. And I take this thing on several long road trips per year. I drive this to uh, Phoenix, Arizona a couple times a year. Uh, so it is just the way it goes. But if we look at the front bumper, you know, it has saved it a couple of times. I think I have, yeah, see this big gash right here that is uh, actually on the PPF, so not a big deal. And you know, same thing, there are a couple of other spots where I can see rocks have impacted. Now it kind of looks like this one right here has actually gone through the PPF, but I can't really tell. But regardless, I am really happy that I ended up getting the PPF, given that, you know, like I said, I do a lot of highway driving, a lot of road trips, so that was definitely a worthwhile investment. And other than other than that, you know, the paint is holding up just fine. Hopefully that will continue, because I do not want to deal with any more peeling paint on this car. I uh, really hate that. <laughs> and uh, as far as the rest of the car goes, the paint is pretty beat. Um, you guys might be able to tell right here. I think you guys can see that right right in there. There's a lot of this car has a lot of touched up areas um, That's you know been scratched down to the metal that have been touched up with clear coat And I mean there are some other imperfections you guys probably won't be able to see this on camera too well But right here we have some very light oxidation starting so that's probably going to be an issue at some point point. And, you know, this rear bumper was repainted before by the dealership that sold it to me, and it was done very cheaply and poorly. So, not only is there a bunch of orange peel in the paint if you get close, but you can see here that the clear coat on the bumper is starting to peel off. So, um, <laughs> at some point, I'm probably going to have to do some more paint work to this car if I really want it to stay looking as clean as it is. But... Uh, at the same time, you know, it's it's not a new car anymore. This car is almost eight years old now. And I, again, it's a daily driver, so it's never going to be perfect all the time. So I'm not sure if I will end up sinking that much money into it, but uh, she still looks pretty good. So I'm not really too broken up about that. But that's pretty much it. That's all I have for the exterior of the car. I'll just go ahead and do a little walk around one more time. And then the rest of the things that I have to talk about are actually under the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that real quick and then we will continue with the video. All right, hood is popped. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things under here that I've done. So the first thing that I'm going to mention, of course, is that you might notice is I got a new strut bar. So these were on sale at Heel Toe Automotive. So I decided, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna get one. It's a uh, DC Sports CS2 Steel Series strut bar and uh, Pretty easy install, of course. It's only four bolts, so it's pretty easy. And uh, it was about $100 or so, I think, maybe $130, something like that. And, you know, I wasn't really sure if I was going to notice a difference in how the car drives, but I actually kind of did at the limit. You know, I took it on some pretty twisty back roads as soon as I installed that. And it's not like a night and day difference, but it, I mean, for the money, I would say it was worth it. And really, I just bought it because it looks cool. It makes the engine bay look uh, cooler but <laughs> other than that I did notice a small improvement in handling you know that with the rear sway bar and the coilovers and everything this car handles pretty darn well uh, for being just a Honda Accord it's not really a sports car but put that on there so that was nice uh, I also ended up replacing the battery because the other one in here was getting a bit weak so we put a Napa Legend battery up in here it's that was back in January that I did that but you know it's a uh, 650 cold cranking amps battery and it's been uh, starting the car just fine ever since I put it in I have the same thing in my Honda Pilot so 
uh, my friend Jack recommended me to buy these batteries and you know for the money they uh, seem to be pretty good I think the one my pilots over two years old now still starts just fine so not a problem but um, other than that that's really it I did have one little tiny thing I replaced too as well this guy right back here is the brake booster check valve assembly and I replaced that because on cold mornings with this car I would have the brake pedal be very stiff as if you know the brake booster lost all of its vacuum while sitting overnight and I noticed this mostly in like cold climates like when it's you know below 40 degrees in the winter time basically so I thought that perhaps you know changing that check valve assembly would help the problem unfortunately it didn't really fix it and honestly like I haven't really messed with it further because it's really not much of an issue because as soon as you start the car it builds it builds vacuum again and you're totally fine so not really sure what's going on there not sure if the brake booster itself has a small vacuum leak or whatnot but I'm not gonna mess with it until the car you know gives me some more issues so that's a cool old car over there anyway uh, moving on um, that is really the only thing I have to mention under here as far as the engine bay goes otherwise all right dude I get it <laughs> I know your car is cooler than mine um, anyway <laughs> as far as the other things in the engine bay goes no nothing really to report this uh, J35 Y2 here is doing absolutely beautiful. You know, the six-speed transmission as well. Everything is still good. Still got the uh, Acuity shifter bushings in there that make the uh, transmission feel really nice. And no other oil leaks or anything to report. She's still oil tight, which is good because when I bought this car, I pretty much had everything resealed from top to bottom. So that's nice. Uh, the intake manifold, my powder-coated intake manifold is still doing well. There is uh, a layer of dirt on it because, you know, it's a, like I mentioned before, it's a daily driver and I haven't really had a ton of time to clean it. But I think I'm going to give this thing a whole detail here fairly soon. But other than that, the paint is holding up well. Uh, much better than my last one. It's not like peeling off or anything like that. So pretty happy with that. That's finally taken care of and I don't have to worry too much about it anymore. So that's pretty much it. I haven't really done any other maintenance under here since the last time you guys have seen it. Just oil changes, tire rotations, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I uh, think she's going to be good for many more miles here. So there you have it. That's really the update on in the engine bay. And uh, we'll, I guess we'll go ahead and move on now. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. I am going to go ahead and uh, go into the interior now. We'll check that out for a quick second, and then this video is going to be over. So let's go ahead and hop in the interior. Still exactly the same in here. Haven't done anything to it. I've just been driving it, but it's clean, so I guess there's that, minus my floor mats. I have to actually... Uh, like I mentioned, though, I'm, I'm planning on giving this car a full detail here fairly soon, but just been kind of busy lately. But there you have it. Everything is still the same. Haven't really done anything to it. Let's go ahead and take a take a seat here. Again, still the same thing. Now, I do have to mention every time I make these videos that, about this freaking radio, this thing is still a pain point here and there. As you know, as you guys may or may not be aware, these things have. A uh, Android Jelly Bean based radio here that also you know runs the vehicle infotainment and it has CarPlay and if I try to run Google Maps and Spotify at the same time the thing just has a absolute meltdown but I found through driving these cars for about eight years now <laughs> that if you don't do that if I just play music it's mostly fine so I've just been living with it um, at some point I will probably look at trying to get an aftermarket radio but I'm really trying to avoid that because it is kind of jank how you have to set it up so I'm gonna ride this radio out for as long as possible but uh, just had to mention that because in every video I have to <laughs> but regardless I think we'll go ahead and start the car now and then we'll kind of round out the video go ahead and close the door or at least crack it all right, gentlemen, so as you can see, we are sitting at 123,018 miles at the current rate. I believe it was uh, had about 112 or something the last time I did this video, so I've put a good 11,000 on it in the past seven months. So not too shabby. Um, other than that, like I mentioned in the uh, engine bay video, or the engine bay section here, it's running totally great. Still got the Borla exhaust on here. So 
Car still runs great, haven't had any other issues mechanically with it, and uh, still absolutely love this car. It's a complete joy to drive. Got about a thousand miles, so I need to do an oil change. Um, <laughs> other than that, like I said, I don't know what else to say, so I guess I'll just round out the video and uh, call it a day. But I still absolutely love everything about this car. I've been driving these cars for, like I mentioned, almost eight years now, and it never gets old. Yeah, it might just be a Honda Accord, it might not be a super fancy, expensive sports car or whatever, but I'm a cheap date. I love these cars, I love the styling, I love the way they drive. The powertrain is excellent. I just absolutely love these cars. So, no complaints whatsoever. I highly doubt I will ever sell this car. I, like you guys may know, I've looked, I looked for probably about two years to try and find a 2016 or 17 V6 six speed coupe. And uh, there's not too many out there. And I think that the ones that they did sell, people are hanging on to them because they're just great cars. So, <laughs> Like I mentioned, I'll never be selling this one, and I absolutely love it. But that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and round out the video here, and uh, I guess I will just say that thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.